Simon, you're correctly saying this time after time that it's often, no matter what the evaluation bar says, and here it said white was better, that if your king is unsafe, you're very likely to lose when you don't have enough time to calculate. Yeah, it's, it's probably just the most, most important thing at the quicker time limits. Trying to get your king safe and uh, sacrifices, well, they become a lot more dangerous because you want that initiative. White doing well, obviously, very well. Two bishops, better king, extra pawn. Uh, Andrew is holding on though, and now he's diving in with the last tactical try. Daniel on the defensive a little bit. I, mm -hmm. you know, again, I'm pretty amazed how well Andrew is defending in some of these games, but that kills the game Ooh. off, winning a piece. Good recognition from Dunya there. And yeah, we do have Stanford versus Princeton. Dunya having uh, graduated from Stanford University. But look at Dunya. He defended G2, he saw the knight was hanging, and that was that. But I think Andrew needs this one. Uh, there's plenty of time left in the match, but you can just feel Danya gaining confidence game after game. Yeah. He's, and he's, he's spotting tactics just so quickly here. That knight coming straight into the position. But is that knight good or bad there? It's in a pin. So if the white knight moves, the white queen is lost. But I don't know. I don't like that knight. It looks very loose there. Yeah, you're just dropping all your pieces. A6 right now probably is good, but knight E8. Oh, the rook on A1. Knight B2 is a, a move. Everything was hanging. G5 undermining white's pieces. If the bishop moves away, then the black knight will be taken. Spotting these tactics just so, so quickly. So white has to sacrifice the piece here. And uh, I think he resigns immediately. Realizing he's got to get more games in. At the moment, this lead is getting a little bit away from Andrew. Yes, just as it is getting away from Borton. I just watched Alariza off the side of the screen win another game. It's 5-1 to one in Faruja's favor. It doesn't seem like Bortnik's match, but it doesn't seem like Tang's match either. The Penguin, I don't really know how often the Penguin goes on tilt, but it's not and tilting Bortnick, his... But it looks like Eddie Razor will take another win there. His B-pawn, yeah. very far advanced. Although neither king is super happy. The white was up a piece. Now it's back to even in terms of minor pieces, but 98, that's a nasty move, just bringing in another attacker. Good news for Andrew Tang Fangs. He did take that game down, and he needs to take the next one down as well. 13 and a half minutes to go. Um, the speed is so important. Uh, Ali Razor, also one of the quickest players out there. As you said, Robert, he's won this event before. Let's not forget that. What are we watching on the right-hand side of our screen? So Ali Reza, uh, we know he's getting the job done. Uh, but on the right-hand side, what is this opening? What is this position? Whose king is worth? Rook takes a3, and Dinah slaps his head. Yeah, that was a great move from Andrew. He's opening up the white king. He's getting the attack. And uh, the white king must be too exposed. It's got to be checkmate with the queen sneaking in. Will Danya waste some time here? Uh, waiting uh, to... Resign. I think he should. Because there's no way that... Yeah, he should do. There's no way, way the White King can survive, right? Black threatening checkmate. Daniel, very annoyed with that one. That game could affect him a little bit because he was doing well. He had this big attack. Has a sip of coffee. Good idea. Just chill out a little bit. And the lead is only going to be two points there with 12 minutes to go. And we know it's win by two. So as long as the one player is trailing by one point... Uh, then they can get more games. So this is a very big game for Dunya. I think that you know, sometimes, like all players, he can go on tilt, and he's lost two in a row, and he does not want to see Andrew find himself back in this match. No. And Andrew must be feeling good as well after winning a couple of games there. Uh, we have the Moroxy bind structure. This is basically uh, with White's pawn structure uh, denotes that kind of setup. Black's pawn push, very logical. Getting play on the queen side. Andrew now going for the attack, just trying to use that f pawn to open up the position. And that e pawn. Bishop c8 move was really bright from Dunn because f5 would have come with the tempo by moving his bishop back to c8. He gets it out of harm's way, and suddenly he's trading off pieces. Black is even on material, but the black king is definitely worse. Those dark squares in front of the king, and also the f7 square for the queen. Comes into the F7 square with a big check there. But Daniel doing a great job of defending so far. 
And he's playing for the win. That's a brave choice from Daniel. He could have just taken the draw there. Yeah, and he could have played Rook F8 just a moment ago, but he didn't do that. He is up a pawn, so trades are helpful for him. He's probably going to Queen G7. Oh, okay. I thought he was going to play Queen G7 and try to win. Do we have a draw there? I think it's a draw. We do. Okay, so back at it they go. Still a two-point spread. And this opening, is this what we just saw? We're at the same line. Very sharp stuff that Andrew's playing as black. He's playing more positional as white. Uh, and then playing these kind of crazy lines with the black pieces. There's a lot of players that do this, you know. Uh, they're willing to take risks when they're playing with black, counter-attacking. But with white, they, they want to steady the ship a little bit. We have a this dynamic looks, position. Sorry, this Robert. looks very good for white, right, Simon? The bishop pair in the center, open space in front of the black king, the b2 pawn defended by the bishop on d4. And then, did he walk? No, <laughs> it's a blunder from Andrew. Yeah. He thought he spotted the tactic there, but it was a good check from Daniel. And Daniel is now a piece up. And um, maybe it's just a good idea to resign this one. I mean, you're a piece down. Daniel is not making many mistakes. Save a bit of time on the clock and get to the next game. Yeah, Queen e5 was a nice uh, way to interpose. And that check was blocked and the rook on b8 was loose. So there's no choice but to trade queen. So there's no choice but to resign. And so it's a three-point lead once more. Still plenty of time, right? Nine and a half minutes. That gives Andrew ample time to make this comeback. But this variation, when the knight went to d6 in the previous game, uh, that did not work out for Andrew. And it doesn't look like it's working out again. Knight, very tactical here. They're both getting sharp positions. Uh, a little update on the other match as well. It seems that Ali Razor is... I think three points up there so it's not as big a gap as we may well it's the same gap as this match also a close match and also time for what nick to come back into it although ali razor with the white pieces in this latest game uh, looks like he is taking it in fact he has so uh, that means that now it's a four point lead for Ferruja and bortnik does not seem very happy to be there but what is going on in this game that we see in front of us it's two pieces for a rook, but Black's king looks far safer to my eyes. It does. Is there any way that Black can increase uh -oh. the pressure though? That that's a very it's nice me. move. And you see, Danya, he's doing that thing where he is checkmate in one, but instead of playing it, he is slowing down. Checkmate two, rather. Queen h6, queen takes h5. But he was wasting okay. time as Perugia did against Bortnik. So, uh, amazing stuff, frankly, from Danya. Just been, it's just been too strong today. He's playing too quickly. He's spotting tactics nicely. And some of the games he's playing, uh, I think you mentioned it, Robert. We, we'd be happy to play. I'd be happy to play, certainly, in a long play game. You know, some of his attacking tactics have just been stunning. And he's seen them automatically. Way too quick. And here, again, the pieces are flying on the board. But it seems like White has worked this out. And White yeah, doing well again. <laughs> And you look at that. Do you see oof. that reaction from Donna? He knows Indeed. it's over. I won't say the middle word, but it was let's go. And that is a pumped Daniel Naraditsky. He is going to move on to the winner, winner's semifinal. 100%. He's there now. Uh, as you mentioned, there is another chance for Andrew, which is great news because, you know, this is his thing, the speed chess. Double elimination. Also, Ali Razor is going to be joining him uh, through into the next round. So a lot of the big names are in. This has been, uh, you picked this match as being the, the match of the day, and it has been. The quality they've both played is phenomenal. Obviously, Ali Razor has been doing great chess as well, but it's just the speed of the tactics, which just amazes me here. I think we're treated. Like, this is a match where there can only be one winner. That's what happens in competition. But I think we've all won because these two are such superstars at bullet chess. And Danya, he won this match. But we know that Andrew Tang can make his way back through the loser's bracket. Uh, if they play again tomorrow, the match score could be flipped. That's how tightly contested their matchups have been over the years. Yeah. Well said there. And it does depend a lot on the day you know on some days one one player can be uh completely in the zone and the other player if they're just missing a couple of percentage it will affect them uh, greatly and what yeah as you said daniel today has been completely in the zone he's spotting everything every little tactic is working his way 
even that move. He just put his knight on the enemy's last rank there, right? Our enemy's first yeah. rank, I should say. And that was a great move because it couldn't be captured. And now he's transitioned into a pawn up queen ending where he should just be close to winning. I mean, we, we've mentioned this this time limit being, I mean, some people have called it like the crack cocaine of the chess world. I, I don't know if that's a very good analogy, but it's certainly the, I think, where you get your adrenaline going the most because. You just have to move. You don't have time to think. I think the endorphins just run through the body at a much higher rate. And anyone who says that chess is boring, you just watch these guys play and you watch the speed of their thinking. And it's just phenomenal uh, how quickly they can move and how quickly they can calculate things. Yeah. And you see this end game that's being worked. Look at that. Queen d4 check. Give you a little check there. Queen d8. You want to keep your pass pawn. But what Dyna's also doing is he's taking time off Andrew's clock. And, okay, this should be a draw. I think that uh, it will be a draw. There's no real point of trying to flag your opponent at this stage. But uh, Bortnik, by the way, also scored a victory against Perugia. So, uh, well, he did before, and now it looks like he's going to suffer a defeat in this game. Yeah, that is the time over. So we're just seeing the end of that one, and we know now the two players that are going through. But who 